so thank you for the nice introduction. And also thanks to the organizers for giving me an opportunity to speak here. Uh, the Kartan Gaki Sumitra Algebra is a joint work with my PhD thesis supervisor, Roberto Rubio. And I guess it's pretty clear what uh, it will be about. Uh, also, excuse me if this talk will be too elementary for you because I prepared it for training school, so I tried to be as self-contained as possible. So I will first like recall what symmetric algebra is. Uh, first of all, it's just a graded uh, vector space of completely symmetric tensor fields on your manifold. So homogeneous element of degree k is just a symmetric tensor of k input. Uh, there is a very simple way how to construct symmetric tensors out of generic tensors. You just symmetrize it. That means that you shuffle all the inputs by all the permutations, and that's it. And as it is algebra, you have to have some product. So the product is called symmetric product. And when you have some symmetric k tensor sigma and symmetric L tensor tau, then their symmetric product is simply given uh, in the way that you first do tensor product, then you symmetrize, and then there is some number factor in front of it. So we have an algebra, and what are basic properties of this algebra? Well, it's associative, it's commutative, unital, and graded. So I have explained uh, the second part of my title. What about the first part? It's Catan calculus, and Catan calculus is usually developed on the exterior algebra, so let me recall also what exterior algebra is. I guess it's also nice to have uh, these two next to each other to compare the differences. So exterior algebra is a uh, graded vector space of skew symmetric tensors. There is similar map to symmetrization. It's called skew symmetrization and it's given in the precisely same way. You just add here sign of the permutation. Uh, you have a product. It's called exterior product or which product, and it's given in the same way. You just replace symmetrization with skew symmetrization, and that's it. And what about the properties? It's again associative, unital, and graded, but it's not commutative. It's so called graded commutative, which means precisely this that if you swap the order of the inputs, then you have to pay by some sign here, which depends on the degrees of, of your forms. Okay. So let me now switch to Cartan calculus. So Cartan calculus can be viewed as a collection of operators uh, consisting of interior multiplications, the exterior derivative, the lead derivatives, and the lead bracket of vector fields. And it basically deals with the relations between these operators in the context of exterior algebra. So there is very natural question in the light of the previous slide. Is there something uh, like Cartan calculus on the symmetric algebra? And so far as we know, this question was never treated in the literature before. Uh, however, there is one uh, bit related paper. Uh, it's this one. But the authors uh, <coughs> had a completely different goal. It was algebraic goal. They wanted to somehow classify or describe the whole space of, symmetri of derivations of the symmetric algebra and they didn't really care about this Cartan point of view and also they didn't really care about geometric interpretation of this object. Uh, yeah, uh, we found this paper after, after, uh, after we answered this question successfully but uh, to be fair I will uh, put this mark HBP to each uh, result which already appeared in this paper before our uh, yeah, discovery. Okay, the second uh, nature question, uh, at least for a geometer, is if, the, if there is some Cartan calculus on the symmetric algebra, are the objects somehow geometrically meaningful? And this will be the second part of my talk. I will explain uh, that they are actually. Okay, so uh, we want to simply mirror. Uh, the approach of Cartan calculus, so we have to somehow study these operators, and the only obvious one is interior multiplication. So let me uh, recall what interior multiplication is, probably all of you know, but interior multiplication is uh, an operator you can define on the whole tensor algebra, 
uh, it lowers the degree <coughs> of, of your tensors by one, and it's given by this uh, easy formula. You just insert the, the vector field to the first input of your tensor. And as you want uh, interior multiplication to be uh, operator of that lowers the degree by one, you have no other choice than define uh, its action on functions in this way. Okay. Easy observation is that this uh, operator is infinite m linear, but we are interested in symmetric algebra. So what will happen when you specify to symmetric algebra? Well, first of all, it's sends symmetric tensors to symmetric tensors. It's easy, easy observation. Uh, it still lowers degree by one, but what is maybe not so obvious at the first glance is that it satisfies the Leibniz rule with respect to a symmetric product. Uh, so it's an endomorphism of the vector space because it's C-infinite M-linear. It's, of course, R-linear, and it satisfies the Leibniz rule. It means that uh, interior multiplication is actually a derivation of degree minus one of the symmetric algebra. Uh, let me compare it with the situation on the exterior algebra. It's quite similar, but uh, interior multiplication does not satisfy the Leibniz rule, but this uh, kind of identity, there is an extra sign here. And this actually means that interior multiplication is something called greatest derivation of the exterior algebra of the degree minus one. Let me now say something about derivations and greater derivations uh, because uh, this is kind of indication of the fact that the role play played by greater derivations in the context of exterior algebra will be played in the context of symmetric algebra by derivations and not greater derivations. So I will now recall uh, the definition of a derivation. Derivation of uh, symmetric algebra in this case uh, is just a vector space endomorphism uh, of the symmetric algebra that satisfies the Leibniz rule, which is precisely this identity. And we say that it's of degree r, where r is some integer, if it uh, increases the degree of a homogeneous element bar by r. Okay, so that's it. And this uh, space of all derivations has a nice structure. I will denote this space by this symbol. Uh, it's if you like equipped with commutator of, of operators, it forms a graded Lie algebra. So you have somehow option to form new derivations out of some noun. Uh, what is the situation in the exterior algebra case? Uh, graded derivation of degree R is a vector space morphism that again increase, increases uh, degree of homogeneous element by R and it satisfies uh, so-called graded Leibniz rule, which is this identity. Uh, so you can see that there is an extra sign here, which depends on the degree of the form phi in this case, and also on the degree of, of your, your graded derivation. And it's similar to, to the case of derivations, uh, because graded derivations, together with something called graded commutator, which is this uh, this operation on the or great derivations, so there is again some extra sign here, which depends on the degrees of your graded derivations. Then it forms a graded Lie superalgebra. So if you don't know what graded Lie superalgebra is, it's something like a sign shifted uh, uh, Lie algebra. So skew symmetry is shifted, and also the Jacobian identity is, is shifted by some sign here. Okay, let me now move to some <coughs> examples of derivations and graded derivations. So we have seen that interior multiplication is a derivation of degree minus one, but it's kind of <coughs> distinguished because you can prove that every derivation of the symmetric algebra of degree minus one is uh, given uniquely by some vector field that is, is, it is of the form of the interior multiplication by this vector field. Okay. Before moving to the Next example, let me state the definition. Uh, I will call a derivation of, of the symmetric algebra or graded derivation of the exterior algebra geometric if it is of degree one. And moreover, it has a fixed, uh, fixed uh, action on functions. And it's given in the most natural way you can imagine probably because the one form which arises uh, by action on function 
evaluate it on the vector field is simply the vector field acting acting on the function. Example, when you have uh, some affine connection, arbitrary, uh, there is kind of nature way how to construct an endomorphism of symmetric algebra. Uh, you simply first act by the covariant gradient, its definition is here, and then you symmetrize this, which ensures you that you end up in the symmetric algebra again, and then there is some number factor, which is important for some reason, which we will see uh, immediately. Uh, okay, so, what are the properties of this uh, NABLA S operator? Well, it's R linear, which is kind of clear because all of these are R linear. Uh, so just, just a question. In yes. this equation, uh, F is supposed to be uh, just a degree zero element. Yeah, sure. And then why, why, do, why do you call it capital D? I mean, that's just the definition of the small d, yeah, of the, the derivative of a function. I, do, I don't understand why, why it gives that a special name, because you specify it to be... Well, uh, it's not given a unique way, right? It's just a property of, of some derivation, and if, if some derivation has this property that it is of degree one. But, but and that's, I mean, yeah, no, that's, that's what I don't, don't understand. I mean, that's not a, a property, that's a definition of df, isn't it? I mean, df well, apply to a vector. Well, uh, if you mean exterior derivative, it has two squares to zero, but I don't assume. So no, no, but, on, on, no, but that's from Yeah, I, I could write here a small d, but. Okay, yeah, sure. So, so, um, so there's only one geometric. As a, so, so you're just saying on functions it has to add, yes. it has to add yes. as yes. usual one, and yes. for others it adds. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so properties, it's R linear, it increases degree by one, because the covering gradient increases degree by one, and symmetrization of course doesn't change the degree, and blah blah blah. Uh, it acts on function as a geometric derivation. Uh, you can see it easily because the gradient, uh, the covariant gradient acts uh, as a geometric derivation. Symmetrization of one form does nothing. And if k is zero, this number also does nothing. And what is not maybe obvious, it satisfies the Leibniz rule. So consequently, uh, this operator nabla s is a geometric derivation of uh, the symmetric algebra for an arbitrary affine connection nabla. So it's not definitely given uniquely. Uh, and I will call it symmetric derivative corresponding to some affine connection number. Okay. Uh, let me say something about gradient derivations of the exterior algebra. Well, there is very similar proposition for interior multiplication, interior multiplications, and there is also very famous example of the gradient derivation. It's the exterior derivative, which can be defined by this proposition actually, because it's a unique graded derivation of the exterior algebra that is first of all geometric and that squares to zero. So the strategy now is to somehow get this, get some analog of this exterior, exterior derivative in the context of the symmetric algebra. And we will start by investigating this set of geometric uh, derivations and then we will try to impose this condition that it should square to zero. Okay, so let's start. Uh, you can uh, prove a proposition that every geometric derivation d is necessary of the form of the symmetric derivative for some affine connection. Okay. So now the nature of question is if the correspondence between uh, affine connections <coughs> and geometric uh, derivations is one to one. Well, it's not, uh, because uh, two affine connections, nabla and nabla prime, induce the same symmetric uh, derivative nabla s, if and only if this relation holds. And this relation can be satisfied for sure. You just take two affine connections that differ by a symmetric tensor, and that's it. Uh, T, T nabla here stands for the torsion. Uh, and this uh, expression here, Nabla minus one half of torsion. It's actually also an affine connection because it differs uh, to uh, affine connection by a tensor. And 
it's actually torsion free and in the literature it's sometimes called canonical torsion free connection associated to some generic uh, generic uh, affine connection because it's kind of easiest way how to construct it okay so what uh, these two propositions are telling to us are that there's actually one-to-one -one correspondence between geometric derivations of the symmetric algebra and uh, kind of equivalence classes on the set of uh, affine connections where the uh, uh, equivalence relation is given by this formula. And if you think about it a little bit, every single equivalence class uh, contains precisely one torsion-free connection. And it's actually this common canonical torsion-free affine connection. So, in conclusion, there is one-to-one -one correspondence between torsion-free affine connections and geometric derivations of the symmetric algebra. So we have very nice description of this of this uh, set or collection of, of derivations. So now we want to impose the condition that it squares to zero. But unfortunately, there is no geometric derivation that squares to zero. So it is what it is. Uh, but it doesn't prevent us to continue because we have interior multiplication, we have symmetric derivative, which is clearly a, a most nature analog of the exterior derivative. So we can start constructing uh, Cartan. I, I, I don't understand. I mean, if, if you have a flat connection, then, then you do have one. Right? No. For flat connection, the no. circle is. It doesn't hold. You, you can check, but it doesn't squash to zero, actually. Uh, so we, we we don't have like a canonical choice for the symmetric derivative, but we definitely have some. Uh, okay, so let me start construct this symmetric pattern calculus. So first of all, I introducing symmetric Lie derivative, which is just the commutator of interior multiplication and symmetric derivative. So this is of degree minus one, this is of degree one, so the whole commutator also is of degree zero, and this symmetrically derivative is actually a uh, derivation of the symmetric algebra of degree zero. Then I can uh, introduce the bracket uh, by taking commutator of symmetrically derivative uh, with respect to x and interior multiplication by vector field y, and this is of degree zero, this is of degree minus one, altogether it's of degree minus one, but we know that every single uh, derivation of the symmetric algebra of degree minus one is uh, given uniquely by some vector field and you can compute explicitly this vector field and it's nothing more than just the symmetrization of the covariant derivative. So now we have analog of Lie derivative, analog of the uh, bracket. So we can <coughs> write down Cauchy formulas for symmetric derivative and symmetric Lie derivative. Uh, which is kind of explicit uh, expression for these operators. So this is for symmetric derivative, this is for symmetric Lie derivative. And I will then compare it with the Cauchy formulas for exterior derivative and Lie derivative. But first of all, let me just recall <coughs> what are algebraic definitions of Lie derivative and Lie bracket of the vector fields. So you can see that it's given in completely analogous way. You just replace commutator with graded commutator and symmetric derivative with exterior derivative, and that's it. Okay. Now we can compare these Cauchy formulas. So you can see that they are pretty analogous. Uh, there is only some extra signs here. And instead of symmetric bracket, there is the Lie bracket of vector fields. Okay, so now we have established uh, Cartan calculus on the symmetric algebra, and one may be interested how do these objects interact with diffeomorphisms? So we have a proposition that uh, if you have some torsion-free affine connection and some diffeomorphism f, then uh, these statements are equivalent. So first of all, uh, f is a so-called affine transformation, which is by definition that uh, push forward f commutes with the parallel transport. Uh, this is equivalent to that. Uh, push forward of f preserves the covariant derivative. It's well known, well known equivalent. But what is not well known is the relation to symmetric Cartan calculus because it's equivalent to 
that symmetric derivative commute with the pullback, it's also equivalent to that it that pullback commutes with symmetric lead derivative, lead derivative, but you have to pay for that in this directional argument of the symmetric lead derivative. <coughs> and the last statement is that uh, push forward of f preserves the symmetric bracket. And you can compare it with the uh, classical result from uh, the standard Cartan calculus, which says that every uh, single diffeomorphism satisfies these three relations, which are completely analogous to these three relations. OK, and now uh, the second <coughs> part of my talk uh, would be about geometrical interpretation of these objects. I will start with the symmetric derivative, uh, as you know. There is an important uh, subclass of exterior forms. They are called closed. And these closed forms are basically given as forms whose exterior derivative is 0. So if you do the same for the symmetric uh, derivative, you will recover a well-known concept of killing tensors. Uh, we just recall the definition. Killing tensor with respect to some symmetric derivative nabla s is a symmetric tensor such that its symmetric derivative is zero. Okay, and just for illustration that these are somehow geometrically important, uh, consider a Riemannian or pseudo Riemannian manifold with metric G and take the Levi Civita affine connection, which is uh, torsion free for sure, and construct symmetric, uh, symmetric derivative. And you can prove very easily this relation. Uh, that symmetric derivative of one form is a uh, lead derivative of the metric with respect to sharp, sharp uh, alpha. Okay, and this has very easy consequence because it means that uh, if, uh, if and only if, uh, if alpha is uh, killing tensor, uh, this lead derivative is zero, and this means by definition that sharp alpha is a killing vector. So you have one-to-one -one correspondence between killing one tensors with respect to this symmetric derivative and killing vectors of G. Okay, but oh, so what about like arbitrary killing tensors? They are also uh, geometrically meaningful because given some killing tensor with respect to an arbitrary symmetric derivative, you can construct <coughs> this function fk on the tangent bundle in the way that you simply you have some your yeah, function, so you have you want to have a map from from tangent bundle to to real numbers. So if if I take some vector and fill uh, the tens to killing tensor with copies of this vector, I have a smooth function on tangent bundle, and you can prove very easily it's well known result that uh, this function is actually constant along every geodesic of of number. So they are really important. For example. In integrability, for integrability, so they appear in general relativity or theoretical mechanics, but also in some other fields of physics or mathematics. And okay, so are there any other places where you can find this symmetric derivative? Well, they are. There is uh, related concepts to killing tensor. It's called conformal killing tensor, <coughs> and it's defined on Lorentzian manifolds. So you have some Lorentzian metric. And it's given as a symmetric tensor such that its symmetric derivative is equal to G times some other symmetric tensor. And these are still uh, geometrically meaningful because they induce a function on tangent bundle in the precisely same way as killing tensors do. And this function is not constant along every geodesic, but it is constant every, along every null geodesic. Okay, so, but this. Examples are still some killing things, and they are related to some conserved quantities. But is there some like, unrelated field where you can uh, you can encounter symmetric derivative? It's actually information geometry in a very uh, very definition of the statistical manifold, which uh, we have seen uh, during the Lorentz talk. Uh, which we have seen during the Lorentz talk, uh, he, he gave us two uh, equivalent definitions of the statistical manifold, one via the dual structure, like two affine connections that form some dual structure, the second uh, via the symmetric three tensor, uh, 
one other uh, equivalent definition is in the one of the posters. And I will give you the fourth one. Uh, so for me, statistical manifold is a trio uh, consisting of a Riemannian manifold and torsion free affine connection such that symmetric derivative of G is equal to three times covering gradient G. <coughs> okay, so that was uh, for <coughs> symmetric derivative. Let me say something about symmetric lead derivative. Uh, I have to speed up a little bit. So you can uh, prove this uh, relation, and it's actually crucial for proving another uh, proposition, which gives uh, geometrical meaning to symmetric lead derivative, because you can write uh, symmetric lead derivative in this differential form. And I will explain how, how this works. Uh, well, you have some vector field, uh, symmetric vector field x, symmetric tensor field uh, sigma, and point p. So you first draw the integral curve of x, uh, starting at p. Then you evaluate your symmetric uh, tensor field at the point psi x t p, where psi x is just the flow of the vector field. You move it via the flow to the point psi x to t p, and then you move it backwards via the parallel transport. And then this uh, symmetric lead derivative simply measures like the invariance of this uh, symmetric tensor field via this funny uh, transport along the integral curve. Okay, you can compare it with the well-known uh, picture for the lead derivative where transport <coughs> is much easier because you just uh, transport it via the flow backwards and then do the same. Uh, let me say something about symmetric bracket. Uh, it's not probably a big surprise that you can prove uh, analogous <laughs> formula uh, to formula for the lead derivative also for the bracket. But what's maybe more surprising uh, is the second uh, property. I will first recall a definition. Uh, consider some affine connection nabla and the distribution D. And this distribution is called geodesically invariant with respect to nabla if every geodesic gamma has this property, which says that uh, if at one point the velocity of your geodesic is in the distribution, then uh, the velocity is in the distribution for all points. So, in particular, if you have an integrable distribution, it says that if some geodesic starts at one of the leaf, then it remains on the leaf forever. And there is a theorem proved by Lewis in the 90s, which says that a distribution D is actually geodesically invariant with respect to nabla, if and only if this uh, symmetric <coughs> bracket is preserved. Uh, in the sense that if you take two sections of the distribution, put it into a bracket, then it spits out uh, another section of the distribution. Okay, and you probably recognized an analog of the Frobenius theorem here. So again, it's nice, nice analog uh, between these two uh, calculi. Uh, then there is something about Poisson geometry. I will have to skip it because I don't have much time. And there is a nice summary. Uh, so we have constructed the Cartan calculus on the symmetric algebra, which is commutative. If your algebra is graded commutative, uh, important uh, endomorphism for symmetric algebra are derivations. Uh, in the context of exterior algebra, the same role is played by graded derivations, which are closed uh, with respect to graded commutator. Derivations are closed with respect to commutator. There is uh, yeah, a Cartan calculus then uh, in the context of symmetric algebra depends on the choice of a fine connection. In the case of exterior algebra, it's given canonically. Uh, we have exterior derivative, Lie derivative, and Lie bracket vector fields. The analogs are symmetric derivative, symmetric Lie derivative, and symmetric bracket. Analogs of diffeomorphisms kind of are affine transformations. Analogs of closed forms are killing tensors. Then we have this funny uh, transport here instead of just transport via the flow. And analogs of integrable distributions are geodesically invariant distribution. This last uh, line is about Poisson geometry, which I didn't uh, have time for it. And just a uh, conclusion. Why all of this? Well, uh, my main field is not Cartan geometry or Cartan calculus or whatever. My main field is uh, generalized geometry. And if you don't know what general geometry is, it's kind of noble approach to study of geometric structures. And it's 
highly relies on the Cartan calculus on and exterior algebra. And basically this new Cartan calculus uh, opens door to a new type of generalized geometry, which I'm working on with my PhD thesis supervisor. But it's a story for a different talk. And thank you for your attention. Are there any questions or comments to Philip? Yes. Well, I would like to do it. I would love uh, <coughs> to just continue with the last uh, remark. So what do you mean by new type of... No, no, just very last one. Ah, okay. <laughs> totally last. So what do you mean by new type of generalized geometry? Well, uh, uh, when you're doing standard uh, generalized geometry, uh, like simple uh, idea is to replace tangent bundle with uh, tangent plus cotangent bundle and equip it with uh, canonical symmetric pairing. And then there is a way uh, how to derive uh, the Dorfman bracket, which is given in uh, this way. Okay, sure. And the idea is what happens when you uh, don't have the symmetric canonical uh, pairing, but you have a Q symmetric symmetric pairing, which is again non degenerate. You just change the sign between the two terms. And then you study the structure. And it naturally leads to the symmetric algebra and these objects. Okay. This is like the main idea. So once again, what would be this minus or minus section? I think. So I have two sections. Then this is like this is non-degenerate. Excuse me for two form. So it gives you like a symplectic structure group on the and bottom. And motivation for this, or is it just a? Well, the motivation is that in the previous case there is a plus, so you just change the sign. Yeah, that's, that's my question. It's just, just a play, yeah? yeah. Okay. Because I don't know if you're familiar with that, but there is a concept of B and generalized geometry and exceptional generalized geometry, and this is kind of like symplectic generalized geometry. So we are just continuing in the list of. Uh, Short question or comment? If not, let's thank Philip again.